Hello. Today is October 30th. It's Halloween Eve Eve. No. Halloween Eve. All Hallows Eve. It's almost Halloween. But wait, is it the 30th All Hallows Eve or is it the 31st All Hallows Eve? I think I think it's the 31st. So is this yeah. Eve Eve? Well, this is nothing. This is just a day in October. No, this is Halloween Eve Eve. Well, Halloween is the Eve. Like Christmas, like Christmas the 23rd. That's like Christmas Eve Eve. That's a hollow attempt at creating a new holiday. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm here to report that I was unsuccessful in licensing the hermaphroditic connector patents from IBM. So we won't be having PCI Express connections like that. Re what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that was the intro for down. the news. That we were talking, it's, it's a genderless connection. Oh, the PCI slides. Well, it turns oh, out yeah. IBM has a patent on genderless connectors. So you can blame IBM for Although IBM the patriarchy? Refer, yeah, IBM refers to them as hermaphroditic connectors, which is perhaps a different situation than a genderless connector, but is it really? No. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. Because yeah. that's a medical condition, and the other one's a mental. Oh, wait, we shouldn't talk about that. So let's start with some, this might be a groundbreaking. Starting with good news as the first story in the government section of Love One News. Uh, the feds have said it is okay to hack DRM to fix your electronics. So like the tractor thing in California, doesn't matter. There's federal law that preempts the state law because that's just how we roll in America. You can fix it, not just do it because you want to. You have to be able to fix it. Uh, this is It's good, but there's this weird double standard in the law where the double standard in the law is that... DRM in, in in one scenario is like this perfect technology where it's like, yes, it's going to protect copyright <clears throat> owners. And then when, with stuff like this, it's like, oh, it will be trivial for people to defeat the DRM to work on their stuff. And the, the reality is that it's actually difficult to defeat the DRM for like the tractor. The tractor might like short itself out and cause problems. And then now that's going to be interesting when we get to the point where you try to fix it. So let's say that you try to do the iPhone fix and they've got that software that cuts it off unless it can call the Apple server, right? Then is that subject to warranty? That's going to go to court. Yeah. I mean, you're supposed to be able to work on stuff that you own without voiding the warranty, but this is going to be the software equivalent of a warranty void if removed sticker. And I'd say that it'll go the other way. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. It took a long time for this one to shake out. So yeah. we might just be tied up in court for another six years or something. I don't <laughs> another know, but, 60 years. But it's good news for those Ukrainians who are hacking the John Deere's because <laughs> they just got legitimized. You know, they might go public. <laughs> those Ukrainians can actually earn side money by selling back to the Americans the tools to defeat that DRM. Yeah. They had a whole, a whole cottage economy going there the whole time. That's, that industry could be in the U.S. Those could be U.S. jobs. That, that could be U.S. jobs. <laughs> you think they'll get visas? To come yeah. over here and sell yeah. John Deere. We'll just sell uh, it online. No, they're, just, they're gonna sell it on. on it's gonna be like on the uh, some international version of Craigslist or something. It's like download your your tractor unlock pack here, only forty nine ninety five. Is Craigslist international or is it just U.S.? No, it's kind of international, but it's not. For I've selling, never actually tried looking at an overseas city. It's not for selling goods digitally. Like there's not gonna be a Ukrainian that shows up at your farm that's like, I got the that's software true. you're looking for. Yeah, but you could meet him in a parking lot and get a USB drive. From <laughs> meet at the Wendy's parking lot. <laughs> of course. Uh, well, that's good news for DRM. A little bit of good news, but maybe some bad news if you're a fan of net neutrality and California. <laughs> California has enacted their own net neutrality laws, but. The feds are saying our laws preempt state laws, so California has agreed not to enforce their net neutrality laws until after the court case and all its appeals shake out, which could be a decade. That starts in February. The new net neutrality in California was supposed to start January 1, so they've agreed we'll wait to the end of the case. The, uh, it's also important to note that all those other attorneys general are part of that case. So it won't just be California that wins if they win that case. It'll be a bunch of states. Do states have the right to regulate commerce inside the state? A we'll Jeep Pie out. says no. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a loaded question a there. A Jeep Pie says many things. <laughs> well, they had a quote from the, the wiener guy from California who's pro, and then, of course, a Jeep Pie who's against. And one of Pie's arguments is they've never proven in court that they have that right. So good chance to do that lawmakers and judicial system 
Well, let's talk about Donald Trump, everybody's favorite president oh. ever. <laughs> he has some worries. He has some worries. Well, actually, I'm not sure if he has these worries, but I think it was the New York Times. They came out with a report that said his phone was being intercepted. Yeah, worried about iPhone eavesdroppers. Now, Trump has actually said that he doesn't use an iPhone very often, but I wonder how genuine that is. Do you think he tweets from a desktop? No. And, no, and, absolutely and, not. And in fact, the tweet that said that I hardly ever use my non-government phone was tweeted from an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that part. So he says not, but more importantly, the, the Chinese have offered a solution. <laughs> use a Huawei phone. Yeah, so this is in Reuters. The reality is that the cellular network, cellular telephones are dangerously insecure for everybody, not just the president. This is not some Herculean thing. That is being done. In fact, most of the cell phone towers around Washington, D.C. are fake. According to the New York Times, these uh, Chinese hacks are they are trying to figure out how to get him to back down on these tariffs. Like, that's the big reason for the hacking. Although, I imagine they would do it no matter what if they had the capacity. They had the capacity, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, another thing that Trump has decided is that he needs better technology in the White House. Surprisingly enough... Trump's inner circle, not very adroit at technology. <laughs> Shocking. Good, good vocabulary use there. So now he has a solution in mind. <laughs> the White House wants to borrow tech workers from Google and Amazon. So literally, the White House's plan in two sentences was a tech worker at Amazon could elect to go on sabbatical from Amazon and go to work for the government. And that could be like a week, a month, a year. What tasks are they going to have them working on though? Like, uh, well, they want to beef up the IT security infrastructure and uh, you know improve the, the web presence and stuff like that. How insane do you have to be? Like, I'm going to go to, like, I'm have, you know, working conditions here at Amazon are so terrible, I'm going to threaten to go to work for the White House if the my government. boss doesn't treat me better. <laughs> But the technology world, you know, Silicon Valley especially, is so lefty. Can you imagine if you're like, hey, everybody in the office, I'm going to go work for Trump for a while. And you come back, <laughs> they wouldn't even speak to you. Or well, maybe you don't want to come back. Maybe it's a power play for yourself. You'll come back and somebody will have taken a dump in your desk drawer. <laughs> but it's crusty and old because, you know, it's been there for oh, yeah. months. Yeah. Or there could be several. You never know. <laughs> Uh, uh, speaking of dumps and desk drawers. Well, hardly. <laughs> Maybe a dump of excitement because this was such a slap on the wrist. But Do you dump when you're excited? I don't know. <laughs> well, some people might. So Yahoo has finally been called on the carpet for their massive security breach to the tune of $50 million. Wasn't it like three lifetimes ago that Verizon bought Yahoo and, Yahoo and well, Verizon wanted... Who even owns Yahoo anymore? That's Verizon. Is it Verizon? Verizon, didn't they renegotiate and save like a billion dollars? Because it, that was after the hack. So yeah. Verizon was worried about nothing. $50 million? That's just... And they're not even going to pay all of it. They're going to pay a portion of it and then the holding company for settling all of Yahoo's debt and stuff is going to pay the rest of it. So that's definitely good news for... Verizon. Well, I mean, if you're if like, if, okay, step away from the technology side of this. If you're a business analyst and you're looking at it and it's like, well, the cost of securing our stuff is going to be like $500 million or yeah, right. if the cost of just dealing with it whenever we're, 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 we're breached is 50, yeah, we don't yeah. need to secure it. That's well, fine. also, let's take that money we were going to use to secure it. Put that into lobby dollars and really guarantee that we don't get hurt when it actually happens. I think that's the smartest move, right? Easy clap. Uh, well, it's often the case that uh, something terrible will happen, and the U.S. politicians, maybe those lobbying dollars did steer them towards some really, really low fines or just ignoring it altogether. But in most cases, the EU are a little bit harsher. <laughs> This is an Italian investigation, and The Guardian brings us a report of Apple and Samsung being fined for deliberately slowing down old phones. But when you read into it, it actually says that the Italians found that newer software runs poorly on older hardware. hardware. So things like making a call was one of the things. It was like if you make a call using the, the older software, it takes a certain amount of time. And if you make a call using the newer software, it takes much longer and they didn't understand why on earth the newer software would slow down when doing a thing like making a call. Because that's not a new feature. The phone was literally just making a call. 
And also there was no option not to do that. Your device was going to do it no matter what you wanted and they wouldn't give you a newer version of the old software that performed the same but had security fixes. So they've decided, I think it was 10 and 5 million. Yeah. So again, not, not real tough. I mean, it's not going to stop them from doing it again. It's pennies to those companies. at least someone has pointed it out. Yeah, it's a surcharge of what, like a, a penny or two per phone sold, like not even. Yeah, they're, they're happy to pay that. And following in the theme of the EU cracking down on these horrible mobile companies. <laughs> well, no, this one's sort of the opposite of that because the EU National Court has ruled against Google and an antitrust process for third-party app stores, and this one specifically. So there's this Portuguese third-party app store, I guess, and you can install this third-party app store on your Google device, but Google Play has recently started flagging it as like malicious and bad and you shouldn't use it. But the EU has found that that is an, an antitrust since the devices are capable of third-party app stores. Yeah, this one, uh, it's kind of a crowdsourced app store. So they, uh, I guess you could say that they, uh, you know, pick the best stuff and try to keep the dangerous stuff out. And as we see week after week, there's horrible, horrible apps that are tracking you and installing Bitcoin miners and stealing your Bitcoin keys. And Why isn't Apple getting fined? I mean, I don't think it's fair that Apple can have the Apple Store, but Google has Google Play and nothing oh, else. Oh, I think they uh, they ruled. I remember that. The, the, the problem is you must make your own device and software. In and order so that's to do what that. Apple does. Right, yeah. So you, if you if the whole garden belongs to you you can build a wall <laughs> but if you out if you have migrant workers then you can't do that uh. <laughs> well we had uh, Amazon the people came out and they did, they didn't like the uh, AI image recognition stuff they were doing with the cops we got Google they don't like the dragonfly you know, the so Chinese it's, search engine that yeah. hides things it's the age no, of, the poop of revolt and the tech industry. And now it's Microsoft's turn. <laughs> Microsoft is defending its bid for $10 billion of Pentagon cloud services amid criticism over government use of technology. So really, I mean, the executives at Microsoft are saying, why would we not bid on this? I mean, it's, it's money. I mean, they've money. already, I mean, Homeland Security, Microsoft already got a lot of flack for running, like Homeland Security uses Office 365 for their email. And so Microsoft, and ICE. Lot, oh yeah, and immigrations, and, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, you know, so why wouldn't they take the money? I mean, the workers don't matter. Yeah, well, that's basically what they said. Is well, they said that everybody's opinion matters, and it's important. We're going to do what we want, ultimately. <laughs> but we'll listen. We'll, you but can go put ahead, your yeah. suggestion right in that yeah, box over there. It. We'll shred yeah. it later. Tell me about your ideas on why we shouldn't take. Okay, I'm going to put your name on this list here, and I'm going to remember that. Why don't you run down to the store? Get some poster board and some glue and some glitter. Make a little sign. Yeah. Put it up in the lock. Yeah. But get your work done. <laughs> uh, well, you know who won't be making festive posters, at least not after a nice air-conditioned or heated ride to school, <laughs> Floridian children. Oh. The feds have shut down a self-driving school bus pilot in Florida. This is a really convoluted story. Scroll down so they can see it. It's pretty cute. It's So there's a bunch of kids at this community Aww. in Florida, and normally there's not bus service. They just walk or ride their bikes to school. And this French company applied for a permit or something for this self-driving bus, but they didn't tell the transportation cabinet that they were going to be having school children in the bus. And so when the transportation cabinet figured it out, they were like, whoa, you can't have self-driving bus full of children. That would be bad if and something French happened. French were like, why not? Yeah. That's my best French accent. It's called transdev. You think they have a code of conduct? <laughs> I think that the French company behind that probably didn't think about <laughs> what they were doing or something. Uh yeah, so the, it turns out there are a lot of rules about school buses, and basically these guys asked for permission to do one thing, which was just some testing. A self-driving bus. There was no mention of children. Yeah, when yeah they, it could be any kind of bus, not a school bus. When they got here, they were like, throw those kids on there. Let's see what happens, and that's not okay. They had a real driver following the bus sometimes. And I think there was one sit, a person sitting there. Okay, Yeah, even better. They just, uh, you know, they didn't actually do anything. They didn't need to the whole time. They only moved at eight miles an hour. But if someone else hit them, yeah. then they're liable. <laughs> it could have also burst into flames. I mean, it might have been like the Ford Pinto of 
Yeah, we don't it's know. Like, no, we don't know nothing about these French buses. It's it's true. I ran over a speed bump. Oh, there's a hole in the gas tank. Oh, the car's on fire. Could be. I mean, you don't know. There was probably like an hour a day where it just didn't do anything. <laughs> Contemplated how best to burst into flames. <laughs> well, someone else who won't be doing anything but sitting quietly for probably from now on <laughs> is the swatter. <laughs> Serial swatter Tyler Barris. Boris, Boris, Baris. Baris. will plead, <laughs> he's not French, will plead, plead guilty to all charges related to man's police set. Now, we reported on this. This was the the swatting that was out in Kansas City. And uh, the both gamers ended up getting in trouble because... There were three people. It was, well, it was kind of a publicity stunt. Or one was like, he's not really going to do it, is he? It's like, he's totally going to do it. It's like, okay, well, you know, I'll go along with it. But they're, they're, both gamers got in trouble, the swatter and the swatty. There was a third guy, though. I think, uh, like, <clears throat> like there was the guy who he was angry at and the swatter, and then I think the third guy, like, actually gave the address or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so everybody's in trouble because that's just not how you conduct yourself. Although, you know, I don't know why we have militarized police, but, hey, you know, whatever. It's cool. Yeah, he's not even going to go to trial. I, I, that's probably smart. Why would you? Yeah. There's no way. No way he wins. But he is looking at life, so he might be doing this to plea. And get some possibility of ever seeing the free world again. Yeah, part of the plea was also agreeing to uh, confess to more swattings. So they got him for other swattings. And I think that's a later story, isn't it? No, that was it. It was like 46 more. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, so yeah. It's messy. He did a lot of swatting, including Canada. So he was uh, international. I wonder if that's an extra charge. I bet it is. Yeah, probably. Yeah, for sure. Well, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Um, they haven't really publicized it. I mean, it's easy to miss. But there's going to be an election. <laughs> Please no. <You've> seen- <laughs> Not again. Those always go so badly. <laughs> and uh, you can actually vote early. You know, if you want to, you can be an early voter. But some early voters are finding some difficulties. <laughs> These these computer scientists and smart people keep telling us not to do electronic voting, and by God, we're going to do electronic voting because I don't know why. So in Texas, some are saying that uh, the voting machines are flipping selections to the other party. There are because there's a camera in everybody's phones. People are making video of it, and sure enough, it is actually where it's like this is actually happening, and it is because of god awful user interface design. Well, what effect will that have? <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's a feature, not a bug. Now, here's there's two interesting things here. Uh, the first thing that's interesting is that this was never caught in testing, or just no one cares. The second interesting thing is it only affects you if you vote very quickly and down the party line. Like, you just click the all red or the all blue button. So, as many people are as are reporting this, it means a lot of people are, are voting partisan voting. Yeah. That's terrifying. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little, little bit. So. so, yeah, the idea, if you've ever been on a web page where, like, it'll load. Hey, this one drives me crazy. Like, you, the web page is loading, and you click in a text box. But then when the web page gets finished loading, the document ready moves your cursor to another text box because it thoughts it's like, oh, you want to start here, right? It's that kind of thing. Uh, so when it, when it finally loads up, it does something to the UI that it doesn't have time to do. Before you vote. My favorite one is when you go to tap the screen on your phone and an ad loads in right and then pushes oh, yeah. the button Everything down. Everything down, yeah. That is what is happening basically, except it's not an ad that's loading. But <laughs> How long do you think it'll be before we have ads on voting machines? Uh, I'd say there probably already are in some like some district yeah. somewhere <laughs> has an ad. Maybe on you the can pay machine. more to have your ad on the side of the page as you go down. That'd be great. It's like made some tough decisions today. Kroger Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Easter Donuts. <laughs> Uh, well, back to the EU and them cracking down on technology. They love to crack technology. They, they hate it. They hate the big media companies. They hate the big technology companies. And now they're pushing for the ultimate price. <laughs> I, I got to admit, when I read oh, no. the headline here, it was like Germany is pushing for a minimum tax for you know digital giants, a global minimum tax. And I was like, this is like the dumbest thing ever. But the reasoning when I read through it was not actually terrible. It was like, look. If a company knows that no matter what company, what country they're operating in, they're going to have to pay at least a certain amount of tax, then we avoid this insanity of companies like spooling up in the Caribbean and then like the Irish thing. And it's like the double Dutch Irish sandwich of tax, whatever. And we avoid this, this situation where these companies are exploiting all these loopholes to try to lower their taxes. But who sets that tax rate? Yeah, exactly. So Never going to work. Because... Was it Estonia? 
is like that little country who just loves to get on the bleeding edge of all the different technology. <laughs> they got amazing fiber optics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They actually but, care about their infrastructure. But like every some time places. something weird happens, they just turn it off. They're like, nope, <laughs> get rid of it. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of just turning things off, how about the Chinese? The spigot of new games has been closed. Uh, China halts a special approval process for new games. So this is like a cultural ministry thing. Uh, yeah, they want to. So they think that computer gaming causes inattention, myopia, myopia. That's and nearsightedness. Nearsightedness, and uh, like other undesirable things in the children, and they want to curb that. So no children, no Red Dead Redemption two for children, right? I the guess not. This thing is so bizarre because it's like I mean, you could say make the same argument for reading. <laughs> it's like oh, they're gonna be nearsighted. They read. Well, so I much. bet there's some close. books you're not allowed to read in China for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good point. So yeah, they they have this approval process, and they're just they just announce they're like yeah, we're we're not doing that anymore. You do have one month. You have like a one month testing period for your monetization strategies. Hmm. So they can get away with it for a month. Fortnite cannot get started in China because of this. Wow. Yeah. Oh, there's, all the hackers, though. They said there's going to be a new process, but the, they were, there were no details. It's like, all right, tell us what the new process is. And they were like, mm. it's going to be whatever games we like. Yeah. So yeah. they really need to uh, standardize on the regulation rules. What if the person who's in charge of that only likes really obscure, like, <laughs> Japanese fire games like, or something? Yeah, they like the, uh, you know... Hidden image hentai games. Those are the ones that they play. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that you can play in China. Uh, well, speaking of hentai, Japan has made some rules about <laughs> cryptocurrency. Uh, Japan has granted cryptocurrency, uh, a cryptocurrency, the industry in Japan as a uh, as being a, capable of self regulation, which doesn't make any sense to me. But Japan's financial services it's, agency is basically saying, eh, "We have no idea." Yeah, it's the Japan Virtual Currency <laughs> Exchange Cur Association. So the idea here is that the Japanese government does not understand anything about crypto. They're old. They're out of touch. They don't know what's going on. So they're just going to hand over the reins to let this association make rulings and avoid bureaucracy. There wasn't the least blip at all in Bitcoin pricing. So I think everyone is ambivalent as to this change. Yeah, I don't think it affects the established coins as much as the newer stuff. So we'll see, I guess. And speaking of Bitcoin, you know, we probably could have put the two China stories together. But hey, they're both about Bitcoin, so it's okay. <laughs> a Chinese court has ruled that Bitcoin should be protected as properly, which is a little uh, properly property, which is a little unusual. <laughs> as in something you own. Yes. Well, it's unusual because cryptocurrency exchanges are banned in China. You can't exchange cryptocurrencies through an exchange in China. But I guess person to person transactions are still okay because this that's what this court case was about. Yeah. So some guy borrowed. Bitcoin or something, Bitcoin Cash or something else, I don't know. And then went into some business venture and that failed. And so the original party said, I want that back. That's my property. And the other person who failed said, no, it's not legal to do cryptocurrency in China. So I don't have to give that back to you. And it went to court. Nope, it's property. Definitely property. So you think he got it when it was worth, you know, $5,000? Probably. It's going to be, I don't know, what's the rule there? That's interesting. Well, let me just, uh, I'm going to just give you a sentence, right? And you can tell me how many uh, spine chills it gives you, right? Logan Paul for president. It's not really a spine chill so much as like a full body recoil. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a little bit of vomit come up my throat, like... Uh, BuzzFeed brings us this really just horrifying darkest timeline article. BuzzFeed News. Which Thank is you. YouTubers will enter politics and the ones who do are probably going to win because that actually happened. In, uh, was it Venezuela? Brazil. 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 This gentleman right here is on the uh, Senate, I believe. And what are his qualifications for being there? Dank memes. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Does, uh, he, does he volunteer in his own community? Like, well, just, no, no, no. Literally, most of his election stuff was dank memes. Yeah, a lot of memes, uh, YouTube videos. He is apparently number one, like front page of YouTube in Brazil every single day, and he's very right wing. And uh, you know, Brazil's got the the presidential race going on, so he's sort of riding that 
you know, populist wave. But he also has created this organization of people who are sort of aligned with him politically. He's getting them all set up on YouTube. And YouTube ad revenue funds their entire campaign. <laughs> a, does that mean we need to run for office? Uh, are we don't, do you want it? Do, no. Uh, no. Do any of us want that responsibility? No. no. God, no. But not only that, but I don't, I'm pretty sure that we can't generate the hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue required to run a campaign. Listen, this guy did it. Well, but in Brazil, <laughs> I think it said he made like uh, 11 grand a month in U.S. dollars. Listen. Which is a we're lot like, in Brazil. We're like the same as him. <laughs> but I mean, try to, run a, page of YouTube every day. try to run a political campaign on 11 grand a month. You, know, <laughs> you won't even be able to keep paper towels. <laughs> Everyone has to bring their own soap from home. <laughs> so Facebook has this reputation. We're switching to social media, by the oh, way. Oh, okay. Facebook has a reputation for gobbling up companies, causing their CEOs to leave in frustration, and then destroying said company. <laughs> Here's the new data point on that line. <laughs> the Oculus co-founder is leaving Facebook after the cancellation of the Rift 2 headset. So Facebook's working on a new VR headset, and it doesn't align with what the Oculus co-founder has in mind. Which was everything that was not normie. Yeah, so Facebook seems to want to do lower power, wireless, phone integration kind of stuff. This guy wants to move VR forward. He wants, like, you know, real immersion. He wants powerful headsets. Lower latency. And they don't agree. So he's, he's going to... Like, yeah, those don't sell as well. So let's not do that. The VR revolution certainly did not happen. I think it's a combination of price and some people vomiting explosively after using it. <laughs> yeah, it's the, well, yeah, it's the, I think it's mostly the price because I think my family would love that kind of thing, but none of them are going to pay that much for a device just to do that. Like when the Wii came out, though, and it was like conveniently priced, my family was all over it. Oh, yeah, that was real normie. Wii yeah. is the most normie of all the consoles. It definitely so, is. Yeah, it sold huge, too. Although I think the Switch has beaten it. I could see that. Well, if you like putting pictures of your kids on Facebook, Please stop, because no one cares. But more importantly, they might get flagged. The children are going to be consumed by the algorithm. Oh, that's like a more distressing version of this headline. TechCrunch has, says that Facebook has removed 8.7 million child exploitation posts with new machine learning tech. But a lot of people have popped up and said, hey, pictures of my kids in the bathtub has mysteriously disappeared from Facebook. Which I'm not like, Ryan. You know, I, I like to see updates on my friends' kids and stuff, but like... Posting pictures of your kids in the bathtub is like, that's like a step too far <laughs> for the internet. That's, that picture stays there forever. You don't want to see baby on the potty chair? No. <laughs> I don't even want to see that in my own family albums. I don't really want to see it on the internet either. Like, that's, that's fine. I'm glad they're potty trained. Don't need to know the details. But you also are creating a situation where, you know, nobody a lot. Well, how long has Facebook been around? Uh, 2007? So we're just getting to the point where people are getting old enough that their entire life has been on Facebook. Well, that's not the question. Yes, that's true. But the question that you have to ask yourself is, would, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth graders, high schoolers in Machiavellian plots find the potty training picture of oh, your yeah. enemy and then yeah. do terrible things to it? And the oh, answer that, is, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. They're taking that straight down to Kinko's, getting it blown up <laughs> into poster size. Yeah. Kinko's. And, yeah. It's like, do you want this for your student body president? <laughs> they so, didn't get potty trained until they were three. <laughs> I think you shouldn't post pictures of your kids on Facebook the same reason you shouldn't pierce their ears. <laughs> That's not your decision to make. I do know a lot of people who pierce their kids' ears it really young. It ain't right. Uh, well, speaking of Facebook, a savage penalty. <laughs> if you consider a few years ago penalty now today penalty maybe not so much but a few years ago savage <laughs> so that whole cambridge analytica thing facebook has been fined six hundred and forty five thousand dollars which was the pre-gdpr maximum six hundred forty five thousand that's it why were they worried post gdpr would be 17 million why were they worried about gdpr that's like the price of a mansion that's not. I mean, it's not even a nice mansion. It's just yeah. It's just like a builder's grade what? mansion. But they're in California. That's the price of a one bedroom. Yeah, here that's a mansion. You'd like be on the Kentucky River and like Sunset Vista. It'd be beautiful. You might be able to have your own steamboat. 
Yeah, you could have nice internet yeah. and live in the country. Some horses. Yeah. <laughs> Several horses. Some thoroughbreds. <laughs> Wake up on a cold January morning. Oh, crap, the horses. <laughs> I forgot. I have horses. Hope they're okay. <laughs> they're or just... the chickens in your case. <laughs> you talking about the chickens yeah. being inside when it was cold. Yeah. Uh, well, we've all heard... Russia, Russia, Russia. Like, Russia is the ultimate enemy. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the meme. you got to say it more shrill. They're going to invade our election. They're going to ruin everything. They're hacking. They're stealing. They are the ultimate enemy. Oh, unless China. Sometimes China's doing that. It could be Russia or it could be China. Or now a new player has entered the game. Iran. Facebook has, has said they've uncovered an Iranian disinformation campaign to sow political discord over Trump and race. So, like, they break down, like, how this is supposed to work, but I'm just incredulous. Like, maybe maybe people getting a license to go on the internet is not such a bad thing. Oh, it's like, you have well, to be don't like... Don't even float that idea. Shh. It's like, you have to be... You have to have above a fifth grade reading level and also be at least this jaded <laughs> in order to go on the internet you have to you're presented with like five download buttons you have to choose the correct one <laughs> yeah well, part what of if the you test. didn't get your license like what if you got to renew it and you couldn't get on the internet i'm sure that I would be able to get on the internet It'll be you're fine. sure yes well yeah so could the iranians that's why that won't work <laughs> so what the interesting thing though is they talk about how these guys you know they they laid out all the different activity that these things had and they had hundreds of thousands of views on some of those videos so is it necessarily malice or is it just greed? Because I'm sure they're getting some ad dollars somewhere, right? Can we like come up with like a, a counter both? group that exploits the ad dollar thing so that it goes both ways? Weren't the Russians doing that? Yeah. <laughs> so so why? we can use the Russians. That's like bringing in the snakes to control the mice. <laughs> uh, and finally, the down votes. Finally. A, a final story about Trump, and everybody loves him so much. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of comments that are pro-Trump, because we always do. But he is uh, he's way down on last week's Twitter purge. <laughs> Twitter accuses Twitter. Trump accuses Twitter of political bias because of the, the purge and a whole bunch of other craziness that's going on. Twitter is taking odd steps because of, like, we had this, all these, we had a lot of craziness in general, like political craziness. And so all these technology leaders are like, oh, I have to do something. But they're really just spazzing out. I kind of get the vibe that Twitter doesn't really want to do anything, but they know if they don't, people will be angry. So they're taking these kind of half measures for the most part. Like, I can't tell that they're really doing anything. And yeah. I, I don't know that I even really want them to do anything. Well, yeah. but if you don't do something, as we'll find out in the business section, think bad things can happen to you. Because we have another social media site. <laughs> That took the path of like, no, we're not going to silence anybody. It's free speech. Didn't work out for them. No. Uh, well, I think that they, I think they're being, that particular group is being duplicitous. But you're going to have to stay tuned for the next episode of the news because, ah! And it'll be on Halloween. Yay. Yeah, the set's dark because it's spooky. Not because we don't have it lit up. Well. But it, it's okay that it's on Halloween because you're all too old to be celebrating halloween i'm sorry <laughs> you don't know we might have some younger fans no. maybe if, if you're if you're old enough to understand the subtle nuance in all of our stories and the 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 hilarious subtext then you should not be dressing up that that's a presumptuous word hilarious well <laughs> you would maybe snort out of your nose slightly <laughs> chortle like a like a Slightly elevated breathing. Yeah. Some of these people get no part of the humor. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. It's incredible how much goes over their head. And it's just like, I would love to sit down with them and try to penetrate that mind. You know, it's like, <laughs> what goes on in there? It's like, I have noticed that. It's like, we'll say something that is just so outlandish and they take it completely seriously. Actually, that's not true at all. <laughs> much all right, the opposite. Buddy. Good job. Yeah. Oh. So more of that tomorrow.